Well, it's definitely been a few days since I had a TV to work on. Look at this, a UHD something something series. And look at this cobbled together mount that's kind of on the back of it. Let's get it out of here. And we see it is a scepter. Oh, high quality, made in China. And it's a 50 inch 4K times 2K series. What the heck does that mean? Well, let's get a uh, power source hooked up to this thing and see what it does. So there is the model number, a U500CV. That's the main model number. And then the sub model is a UMK8LHIV93EA. Uh, this belongs to my grandson, who I believe is 12 right now. And he texted me one day and said, my TV's not working, what can you do? I told him to go ahead and unplug it, let it sit for a few minutes, plug it back in. He said he tried it for two hours, it still did not power up. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over. I'll apply power to it. I do have the remote with it, which is lucky. Now this thing does have power buttons on the side of it, so I will try to use the power buttons as well and see if we get anything whatsoever. Okay, so I do have his remote right here, and it is the original Scepter remote that came with the TV. And I do have another Scepter TV right here that I use when I'm working on some units. I use it for an HDMI monitor. In addition to my main monitor back here, I use to watch my YouTube videos as I'm shooting them. And so let's go ahead and see if this TV actually powers on. And I do see a blue LED on the corner. So that tells me the remote is actually working. And yes, I do see the Scepter logo. Let's turn that one back off. And so I'm thinking that this thing should have the same. And I'm not seeing anything in the corner. It looks like a red light, but I don't think it is. Let's hit the power button here. And I see absolutely nothing. I know the remote is working. There should be a light that illuminates in the corner. In fact, the other one just powered up once again, just from the incident reflected light here. And I can point this. This is a great way to test your remotes. Just point it at your cell phone and press the button. You should see the infrared LEDs light up and it is emitting a signal. So something's going on with this set. Nothing lighting up right there whatsoever. Okay, well, I'm gonna flip this thing back over. It's quite large on my little tiny workbench here, and we will see what it does. Okay, well, I have the, quote, back off of the unit, at least the serviceable area of the back. And I can see we've got some ribbon cables over here that connect to the remote sensor and most likely the keypad over here on the side. And it comes into this one cable and goes down into the main board. Let's take a look at the main board on this unit. And it doesn't look too terribly bad for a cheap Chinese TV. One thing worthy of note, if you're taking the back off of this, the speakers do plug in right here and they do come off on the back area. So make sure that you unplug that connector. There's no lock tabs or anything. Just got to like wiggle and pull straight up and it'll come off. But let me show you what I see right off the bat. Take a look at those three capacitors right there. Those are bulged. That means they have high ESR. They've been generating heat. Over here, the LED driver caps, they all look absolutely perfect, although they are the same brand. Cap Xcon, I believe it is. Cap Xon, X-O-N. Cheap Chinese garbage. Are they even 105C rated caps? Uh, I can't tell, but they are 470s at 16. There's an actual chance I might have some of those. Let's head on over to the capacitor bank I have over here. And we'll take a look and we'll see what we have. 470 at 16. And I do have an assortment of different 470s at 16. Those are Chong's, those are cheap Chinese garbage. 
don't know where I got those at. And those look like a much higher quality cap, and I do have a couple of Kemets. A couple of Kemet 470s at 16. One, two, three, four, five of those. Oh, I need to order more of those, I guess. Anyhow, we'll go ahead and throw some caps into this thing and see what it does. So it might be kind of hard to see, but here's the pin designations right here. Pin 1 and 2 are ground. Pin 3 is 12 volts. Pin 4 is 12 volts. 5 is power supply on. And 6 is 5 volt standby. So I want to look at that 5 volt standby first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I want to look right here. And I'm going to power the unit on. And I'll put this in min max. And see if we get anything at all. Ooh. That's not good. Absolutely nothing. This thing is dead to the world. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the power to it. So power is off and I'm going to put it back on auto range DC and I want to measure between the source and the drain of the FET right here and see if I get voltage. And I do. I have 165 volts. That's the 120 volts times 1.414 rectified DC voltage. And so this FET is getting the proper drive voltage, but why is it not turning on? What's going on with this? So I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull this board out of the unit and check some of these small caps and see if they might be faulty as well. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. And then we'll do an ESR check on those caps. And hopefully we'll find one of these little guys as bad. Maybe the bootstrap cap, which is which is what's responsible for starting the power supply. So yeah, let's get the board out of this thing. Okay, so I've got my 117 right here, which is in the low Z, the low impedance mode. It puts a 3000 ohm load across the input leads and we'll discharge this down to zero volts or effectively zero. That's close enough. That way there's no chance of shock or damage at that point. So let's go ahead and unplug the power cord. This is the connector that goes to the main board. We'll unplug that and tuck it up under here. These are the LED outputs. So this apparently has three different strings of LEDs, as you can see by the three white and three red leads right there. And we'll tuck that back out of the way. And we'll just zip this power supply board out of here and do some checks. Okay, power supply board is free. Let's take a look at the bottom of it. And I don't see anything that's obviously setting me off right now. Nothing burned, nothing arced. Okay, let's uh, get this TV off the bench, put the board back down on the bench and do some tests. Okay, well here's the power supply board out flipped over. And so these three capacitors that I have marked in red are the Bulge 470s at 16 and they're all in parallel. And so I, I would expect to see like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 ohms. And I see 0 0.52 ohms. Those things are toast. That means they're about one and a half ohms each. That is terrible for a 470. This one right here, I believe is a 4.7 and I get 2.9. I'm very happy with 2.9 on a 4.7. This is a 22. And I see 0.33 ohms on that one. I'm very happy with 0.33 ohms on a 22. Well, at this point, let's go ahead and put three new 470s in it and see if we get different results. Okay, new caps are installed. Let's go ahead and check the ESR on the new caps now. Remember, they're all three in parallel. 
and I see 0 0.02, much, much better. Just for the fun of it, let's check the ESR in each individual old capacitor. So the first one is 11 ohms. Ooh, that one's really bad. That's probably gonna be the worst one I'd have to say. Ooh, nope, my bad. 15 ohms on the next one. And on the last one, I get 6.9 ohms. I'm not liking that at all. Okay, so I do have a suicide cord connected right here to the AC input. And I'm going off the positive lead of these diodes, which are all commonly tied together. And they do go to the positive side of all three of these capacitors that I did replace. I did add a negative jumper so I could put my clip lead on it way up here on the top of the screen. Let's go ahead and power this on and see if we get voltage out of this unit out of the TV. And I see absolutely nothing. Well, there's something else going on with this board. What is going on with this thing? So let's go ahead and power it down. So power is off. I'll put this back in auto range at this point. And then I suspect this is the main filter cap. And I see 162 volts right there. With power on, I see 174. So the standby power supply is receiving Robbie Plus. So it should operate. Why it's not operating is beyond me. It might have damaged the switch mode power supply. There's probably a little chip down here that causes this thing to break into oscillation. And yeah, I think at this point, I can't find a schematic on this board. I may just have to find a used board for this TV. Okay, well I did manage to find a somewhat similar schematic for this unit. And I do believe that this is the problem right there. D404, 22 volt Zener diode that supplies the VDD or the B plus to the driver chip. Now let me show you the result of that diode. We'll go ahead and test it real quick. So I'm on the ohm range right now and such a huge diode here. So let me see if I can get my leads on here without it flying away, hopefully. Come on, stay with me. And I see 109.4 ohms, 109.3. A Zener diode should not read 109 ohms. That thing is toast. So let me show you what I did. I don't have a 22 volt Zener, but I have two 12 volt Zeners that I put in series to make 24 volts. It's probably gonna be close enough, hopefully. So if you look at the schematic, you'll see that D404 is in parallel with C409, the 4.7 microfarad 50 volt cap. So because this was a surface mount, didn't really have space to put it right there. So I just went ahead and put it across this capacitor. Let me show you where it is. So there are the two 12 volt Zener diodes in series, cathode to this side right here. And there's where the diode came from. So if you look, you'll see this trace is common and right there is the marking that shows this is the cathode side. This is the anode side right there. So next step, let's power this thing on, on the workbench out of the TV and see if we get a five volt standby power supply. Maybe electro boom happening right here, maybe not, we'll see. Okay, suicide cord connected down here, negative once again up here and positive to the cathode of the diodes that feeds these three filter caps right there. Either sparks, smoke, or it works. Here we go, power on. And we get 5.19, perfect. That is what I want to see. So let's go ahead and measure the voltage on that Zener diode and see what the voltage actually is. Okay, well it's slowly discharging. Let's power this thing on. And it's holding steady at 14 volts. I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay, let's put this back in the TV and see if it actually powers on now. All right, so I have my probe in pin number six right now, which is, as you can see right there, the five volt standby power supply. The board's remounted back in the TV. Everything is connected. Power on. 
and I see 5.169 volts, which is exactly what I would like to see. Okay, let's flip this thing over and hit the power button and see if we get a display on this unit. Well, I got it kind of zoomed out as far as I can get it. I'm gonna hit the main AC power switch and I do see a red light over here in the corner. Of course, you can't see it. So I'm going to hit the power button on the remote and it does turn blue. And I do see the logo coming up, so that's good. That means something is happening. I see HDMI 1. So let me go and hit the menu button. No signal. That's perfect. So we'll go to the picture menu, which you can't see right now because it's way up here in the corner. But yeah, you can actually see the set is working. Anyhow, that's going to be it on the repair on the scepter for my grandson, my 12-year-old grandson. He's going to be so happy to get his TV back. Three capacitors and a shorted or very, very leaky 100 ohm Zener diode. It should be 22 volts. Anyhow, that's going to be it. I'm going to put an HDMI signal into it and we'll finish this video. Well, there it is up and running once again. The Scepter U500CV. Once again, saved for the recycle bin. Let's see if it'll play a video on it. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. And it recommends this video to other subscribers due to the YouTube algorithm, like yourself. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Stand by for bloopers. Okay, so I have his remote right here, and I do have another Scepter TV that I use over here when I'm working on units. No, I don't want a photo. Doggone it. Okay, here we go. Inside view. Let's clean the lens first. Here's the pin exit. So I'm going to get my 117 out here and I'm going to put it in the low impedance mode, which is 3000 ohms. And I'm going to make sure this discharges down too close to zero volts. And you couldn't see that. So I'm going to take that again. Okay. Power on, power off. And we'll just zip this power support which is exactly what I would love to see. The Scepter C500